Hello, all. Good morning. Trevor Dampier of Trevor Dampier Ministries, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it is Wednesday, uh, May 26th, and second Passover and the lunar eclipse, the super duper flower blood moon. <laughs> Oh, what do I say today? I, I was sitting over here like, what do, what do I say, Lord? Now, what we don't want to do, okay, let me let me be clear when I say it's super duper high rapture watch day, right? We don't want to say like 100% like this is it. Let, let's not say that. But I'm telling you, man, we got so many signs here right now. It's crazy. You know what I mean? That, that, that's all we're saying. So um, keep watch, but don't get so sucked in. You know what I mean? That you sit around and suck your thumbs if we don't leave. Trust me, I'm going to be feeling like that. I'm like, no. <laughs> but um, I'm also very happy when I am disappointed because when I'm disappointed, it's just like a child sitting around um, looking through the window at an orphanage waiting for his father to come pick him up and it's raining outside and stormy and then they see uh, some car lights coming and go, oh, yeah, they go there. And then it, it goes past and it goes, no, sorry, sorry, son, it's not your daddy. Your daddy's coming, though. He called and said he's coming. I go, no, but it's taking so long, you know, and, and that's how we feel. You know what I mean? But you got to keep up the hope. You know what I mean? For, for your daddy to come home every light. That's the fun part of the thing, even though it can emotionally pull you out. But, but, but that's the love that you're showing and it's evidence of it. You know what I mean? When you feel that way. So don't feel bad for it. Actually rejoice when you feel disappointed. You know what I mean? Because that means, well, disappointed when he's not coming or hasn't come yet. Forget that statement. When he's not, has not yet come. Because it means that you're still watching. You're still looking. You know what I mean? You just continue to keep your anointing oil in your lamp, in you. You know what I mean? Keep the anointing. Keep your mean fresh word in you. You know what I mean? And, and stay in repentance and obedience. And that is the call that Jesus has for us while we continue to work in the vineyard and warn people of the things that we're seeing and that are here. But let me um, read Numbers 9 for, for those of you that don't understand what second Passover is. So I'm going to read this. It's not that long, but it's very important that you guys know this is not a made up thing. This is literally God himself speaking um, to the Israelites. So let me read this. Uh, Numbers 9, 1 through 14. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they came out of Egypt. He said, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time, at twilight on the 14th day of this month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover, and they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. That's Nisan 14. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. <clears throat> but some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day because they were ceremonially, ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day and said to Moses, we have become unclean because of a dead body. But why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time? Moses answered them, wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites when any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body, or are away on a journey, they are still to celebrate the Lord's Passover, but they are to do it on the 14th day of the second month at twilight. They are to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. But if anyone who is ceremonially, un, uh, ceremonially clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from their people for not presenting the Lord's offering at the appointed time. They will bear the consequences of their sin. So really important to understand, like this was a commandment, a strict one, you know what I mean, from the Lord. So um, it is an appointed day. Uh, and keep in mind, when the Israelites asked Moses, they weren't on a long journey. They just said, hey, we were unclean because of a dead body. The Lord added that long journey thing. Jesus represents the man on the long journey. 
You know what I mean? So it's very exciting when we're at this point because the Lord orchestrated this appointed time for for a reason. Um, And I love it that it's the second Passover. We know that the Lord has two brides. You know what I mean? The first time, you know what I mean, that he rose, you know what I mean, on Passover, you know what I mean, or, or died on Passover, you know what I mean, per se, but then with the three days and, and then got risen from that, you know what I mean, after that, then the Old Testament saints also, you know what I mean, were walking around and talking and resurrected at the same time. You know what I mean? So now we've got a second opportunity to be resurrected with the first. Jesus was the first fruits, you know what I mean, of many. You know what I mean? So we may have that tied in with the first Passover. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. So very, very exciting. Okay, so let's get to uh, the news from yesterday. I got to hurry up and do this because I want to be outside at 7-Eleven Eastern today. Man, I surely hope, man, that this is the last day, man, on, on this. Well, I keep saying not on this earth, but on earth the way it is. You know what I mean? Because we'll be coming back in our new bodies. You know what I mean? When we come. So, um, oh, Lord willing. But anyway... We're starting to see some of those uh, uh, solar flares start to get through. Um, The major ones are supposed to hit um, today. You know what I mean? So we'll talk about that very shortly. Um, But they were already, you know, starting to go. So over in Goma, um, where that uh, Yiragangu uh, volcano had erupted a couple days back, earthquake hits Goma two days after the volcanic eruption, causing cracks in the earth and more destruction to homes and infrastructure. Um, and then there, uh, uh, there's a lake over there and I'm going to talk about it, um, shortly. Um, but it had, uh, methane bubbling up in the lake after this earthquake. Um, and now the sucker's on fire and the sucker is on fire. So I don't know what happens with eruptions like that, but dude, it, that is some scary stuff, man. I, I don't know what, what what's going to happen. Uh, Sister Barbara had another uh, prophetic message, um, says that you have been prepared by world leaders for a strange encounter. Um, So it's another prophetic word from the Lord declaring world leaders have set up a strange event to take place soon and to keep our eyes focused on Jesus so we are not deceived. Um, I mean, this could be Project Blue Beam. This could be all kinds of crazy deceptive stuff, but um, the Lord's already pre-warning, saying that, look, they've been planning this stuff for years and they have a strange event to, to come. You know what I mean? And if the Lord's saying it's strange, then, um, well, in our view, then then that's um, what we need to watch out for. We had some, some more um, um, news on Israel's intelligence. There was another explosion in Iran that took place yesterday, uh, most likely by the hands of Israel. Um, so we, we do see there, there's more uh, tit-for-tat War stuff that, that's still going on between Israel and Iran, even though that uh, peace and safety deal, whatever, for, for Gaza and, and them, you know, um, is, is in motion. It's like Israel just moved straight back to Iran <laughs> with the, with the tit for tat stuff. Um, so keep in mind, like this, this thing is, is growing and it's going to continue. First, uh, Bill Gates stated, um, I think it was last year, that a virus worse than COVID would come in, um, in like an attack um, within five years. So by 2025, and now the WHO, WHO, um, is aligning with that statement. So a virus, so what, what they say is um, a virus even more transmissible and fatal than COVID-19 will lead the world into the next pandemic, the Director General of the World Health Organization has said, noting the evolutionary certainty <clears throat> of such an occurrence. Make no mistake, this will not be the last time the world faces the threat of a pandemic, Tetros Adhanom Hebrezis told the UN agency's annual assembly of health ministers from its 194 members states on Monday. It's an evolutionary certainty that there will be another virus with the potential to be more transmittable and one and more deadly than this one. Mm, mm, mm. They already have plans to release another one. Goodness, man. Uh, And the Lord talks about plagues and and pestilence and all these things are going to be hitting during tribulation time. And they said, they're telling you 
It's going to be worse than COVID already. You need to sign out of this world now. There's only one entity, one person that is going to get you out of here, and that is Jesus Christ. No one else is going to remove you from here. No one's going to help you. The government is satanic. No one's going to help you. You need to help yourself find a way. And Jesus Christ is the way. He will lead you home. But you got you to gotta commit yourself to him. You can't have a marriage with somebody that's uncommitted. You got to commit yourself to him. And you got to do it now. Like literally, we have an hour and 11 minutes till the full uh, uh, lunar eclipse. I mean, he can come before that. He can come right now while I'm talking. But you got to understand when we're sitting over here and we're watching, we're like, look, this is high rapture watch time. And it's 7 I know we haven't had it right. We're guessing. This is, these are all guesses. We're, we're not saying we know exactly the day. We don't. These are all guesses. But one day we're going to be right. And one day very soon we're going to be right. And it could be today. And man, you don't want to be on the other side for those that are not watching. You do not. This seven-year tribulation would be something you never could have thought of in your dream, not even in these scary movies. You, you, you got to get out of here. Get out of this world. <clears throat> so it looks like there's another flare that popped off the sun yesterday, but also it was super-duper injured. There was two large objects, these big white objects. Could have been just one, and it moved from the top of, of Lasco in the satellite, and then it moved down. This thing looked like a big ship. I mean, it could be, you know I mean, our ark. Honestly, I mean, we looked like it. That's what it looked like. It looked like an ark, or you could even look at it like a dove. And this thing was huge. It's, it's like as big as the sun almost. This thing was monstrous. Uh, and it's moving fast. It was at the top of the sun, then it went to the bottom. So this thing is moving. So um, it's very interesting. You got to see that thing. Um, we don't know what it is. We, we definitely don't know what it is at all. Um, this is what I was talking about. Uh, Lake Kivu um, bubbles up methane after a 5.1 earthquake hits uh, Rwanda. Uh, and then they, they did an update, you know, on the video, like I said, and um, literally it caught on fire. So, um, man, if that thing explodes, man, I mean, it's right next to the villages. Like, it's literally right there. Like, they could walk inside the water and just walk to it. Um, very dangerous, and uh, I did some research on it. They said um, some years back because of the CO2 that was pouring out, um, hundreds had died, maybe even more than that, maybe into the thousands had died just because of the gas alone being burnt and then pushed into the villages. Um, so, Lord, please protect those people that are over there, Lord. Let them see this and let them see that they need to repent, that there's a God that is uh, pushing these birth pains, and his name is Jesus Christ. Let them point to you, Father so that they will know who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. If you thought we were done with the storms, we are not. The, the central territory has already been pounded uh, this week with severe weather. Um, even in North Carolina area, you know, they've been seeing um, storms, but we have more cold fronts coming. More cold fronts <laughs> coming. So there's going to be more snow in certain areas. Um, but, um, like I said, more severe weather, uh, to the central territories and Northeast, um, starting from yesterday and going on for the rest of the week, um, large hail, damaging winds and tornadoes because of the, uh, multiple cold fronts, more birth pain warnings from the Lord. Here is that uh, solar uh, eruption uh, update uh, to give you some timing, but <laughs> very interesting timing. Again, the multiple CMEs that have hit us have opened up the Earth's shield. So there's so many, the, the C flares, then those M class, literally the shields are open. It's, it's like it was appointed. The Lord's been pounding, <laughs> making sure this opening comes, and then the M classes are hitting. Bang, bang, and they're going to hit. <laughs> at UTC 12 o'clock, UTC 12, May 26th, that's about 8 a.m. EST today. <laughs> but, 12, but 12, at midnight, the cry rang out. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Oh, hallelujah. So another God week. 
I mean, on what's about to happen. You got um, multiple flares all about to hit all about the same time. You know what I mean? And that's at 12. We have biblical scripture regarding 12. You know what I mean? At midnight when the bridegroom comes. It's second Passover. I mean, we have the, the super duper flower, blood, moon, and crib, super rare, 7% bigger than others. Use the, the number seven. I mean, we have, you know, of course, the COVID stuff. We got the COVID passports. We got, I mean, we got so much. We got Israel with the peace and safety, you know what I mean, stuff going on right now. Sudden destruction comes upon them. Man, we got sign after sign after sign. <sighs> All we, all we have to do is just stand here, people. Like, we, we literally um, are, are standing at a bus stop, and the bus, you know what I mean, is, is about to come. Like, literally, you know the bus is coming. It's always on schedule. Like, uh, he's right on time, always has been. Um, so, so we wait for him. We just wait. But you need to make sure you have your bus ticket. You need to make sure that you are um, um, right with God. Ask him. You know what I'm saying? Say, Lord, is there anything in me? It's unclean to you. You know what I mean? Please let me know so that I can repent for it. Not just right now with words. Let me know what it is so I can turn away from it. That's what the Lord wants you to do. Not continue on this repetitive thing and then keep saying you're sorry every single time. Then you're really not sorry. Who wants a wife that keeps going out, you know what I mean, and then goes tootsie rolling with some dude, comes back, apologizes. Next thing you know, two days later, she's back out with the same dude. What would you do with that bride? What would you do with her? Would you trust her? Would you honestly think that she was being honest? So it's really important that when the Lord tells you what's going on, you do everything in your power to stop sinning. That's what he was saying when he was healing people. You know what I mean? When when he would uh, 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 tell people about their sin, he said, oh, he's, he would first heal them. So he'd forgive them. Then he said, now go and sin no more. But that's what he would say. He would say, okay, and, you know, feel free to go and then come back. And, you know what I mean? If it happens again, you know, well, he says, get up, be healed, sin no more. And then he turned his bend. He had nothing else to say. You know what I mean? So we need to stand in faith. We need to separate anything that is pulling us into sin and keeps pulling us back in. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care if you're going to throw your whole phone away. And that, that's what the Lord was saying. He said, look, if your eye keeps causing you to sin and you can't get control of the sucker, plug it out. He's, what he's telling you literally is whatever it is that is causing you to sin, you need to get it off of you. Pull it away. Get it away from you. Now, don't go pull your eye out, but if the TV is on and it keeps luring you to, to channels or, or whatever that you know, it keeps drawing you into sin, stop watching the TV. Get, the, get rid of the TV in your house. Oh, but my kids, they look. Get rid of it. You know what I mean? you got to figure something else out. You're going to have to give them an iPad or something or, and put it on child programs and put your TV on child programs and then give it to someone that you trust where only they have the password to it and they can't give it to you. Like, you got to get serious about your salvation. Like, this is a serious, serious thing. And showing that you're, and showing to your bridegroom that you are faithful. That is what this walk is all about. Showing your demonstration that you are walking in faithfulness and love with your bridegroom. Because your bridegroom's doing it. You need to do it on your side. That's the covenant. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get to the verse of the day because I got to hurry up and make sure that I post this, dude, so I can be standing outside. I'm playing, you know, some um, uh, uh, good, good music. Here he comes, riding on the clouds. I always do that in High Rapture Watch days when I'm standing outside. I play the same song. I'll be playing that sucker at 7-Eleven today. Um, I hope y'all can play with me. 7-Eleven East Coast um, for 14 minutes. It will be uh, at full lunar eclipse for 14 minutes, divisible by seven. <laughs> the Lord is wonderful. Okay, here we go. All right, let me get at it. Uh, John 3.17. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> I, I don't pick these, and I didn't even look at it. All I did was just refresh and then hurry up and get in here. But this is just awesome that this is the scripture for today. I'm... I'm I love the Lord, man. He's something else. He is something else. But here we go. John 3, 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. 
I don't even think I need to say any more than that. I don't need to say any more. God is so good. He is so good, people. I was sitting around, and I, I suggest that you guys do it. Um, trying to meditate, even from childhood, growing up, and how the Lord knew where I was going to be, and um, just helped me through life. I was praying, even though I was lukewarm. You mean back then? I was born and raised in the Baptist church and stuff, and you know, what I mean, yes, I still prayed even while I was sitting. Most lukewarm Christians are doing that now, um, but I was way heavy on the sinner side, even though I loved Jesus, I knew who He was. You know what I mean? Even tried to respect them sometimes. I remember when I was uh, 13 or 14 years old, me and my brother made a covenant between each other. We said, hey, like we should stop um, like using God's name in vain. We're really scared of that. Well, the Lord put us put it in our hearts. So, I mean, we would sit around and be drinking and all that, but we would never say, um, I don't even like saying it in vain. You know how people go, uh, I can't even say the word. Uh use this Christ, you know what I mean? You know, when they get angry and they use his name in vain, you know what I mean? And um, we, we stopped, we made a covenant not to do that. You know what I mean? So but anyway, I was thinking about all the, the things that I've been through in life. And when I prayed and God delivered me, even when I was in sin and, you know, then I get a little bit better and then a little bit better and then faith to faith and glory to glory. And when I completely turned my life over to him and then I prayed and said, Lord, I don't want to make decisions on my own anymore. Um, can you please make the decisions for me? And then I went on rapid growth from that point. You know what I mean? And and he's a good God. He's never disappointed me. You know what I mean? That That's why I love him so much. He's already proven enough. And he is going to show up. I'm telling you. He's going to show up. He's a right on time God. Always has been, always will be. The phrase comes and why most people acknowledge that is because he operates in the same way. Right when we get to the point where we're like, oh man, exhausted and there's no more left. That's when he shows up. We're at that cusp right now. And man, man, oh man, today's going to be a great day. We don't go home. This is a marker indeed. And something big is going down. Lord willing, uh, we will see you in the clouds. Shalom. Love y'all. Jesus Christ surely loves you dearly. Have a good one. Later.